Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 19, Drawing Tools with the LCD. Drawing Tools. All right. Okay, so here we were in our fabulous little patcher, and um, this is very interesting to start drawing like this, but it's also quite limiting, so I think we need to make a couple tools that are going to help us uh, make drawing more interesting. So um, you all probably remember our good old friend Swatch. Type N and type Swatch. There's our Swatch. And the first thing we have to do with our Swatch is go over to the inspector and come on over here in the inspector where you see it says compatibility. Click that. And what that does is cause Swatch to output numbers between 0 and 255. Newer objects are now using, and jitter objects, use numbers between 0 and 1. So now we've changed that to 0 and 255. And um, that is going to just be a great thing. But we are even going to do better than that. In this great object, Swatch, we don't have any alpha control. So, and we want alpha control. Uh, so, um, what we want to do is get a slider that is named, I couldn't remember the name of it, called multi slider. There it is. So, you can type a new and then multi, and you'll probably get multi slider right off the bat. So there it is, and that's its normal way of looking. We're going to just adjust it so it goes this way and looks a lot like the swatch. And then uh, let's get its inspector going here. Change the orientation to horizontal and change the way down at the bottom somewhere there's a come on come on come on okay so I could just zoom out but I didn't feel like it um, we don't want it to be a thin line we want it to be a bar and we want the range to be from 0 to 255. There we go. I think that covers everything that we need to change about our slider. So coming back here, clicking in here, we should now be able to do this. Okay, completely opaque, completely transparent. Anybody like it? I do. Okay, there's half and half. All right, unlocking the patcher. And then we need to put all of this together somehow. And there's this great object that I use constantly. Type N, type Bondo, and then type 4. And what Bondo does, it's like a couple obje other objects in Max, but it has one really, really great thing, and that is if you put any input in any one of these it sends out the values for all four of them in order bang 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 which we'll gather up using a um, using a pack object um, swatch packs its three numbers and sends them out the left inlet so I know we're gonna get three numbers out of this which if we put this in here will count for one, two, three, because it's going to send out a list of three. I know this sounds a little nutty. You can just trust me on this. You could go up and uh, you could unpack this and then pack them back into here if you wanted to. Um, but let's just believe me. You could do it, but why would you? You could trust me when I do this. Okay? This is the same 
as if you did new object pack zero 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 okay I'm doing this backwards unpack that's what I want to say unpack unpack zero 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 okay for anyone who's a non-believer out there now see we always run into this issue with max objects that if you change anything in, in the outlets that are not the leftmost outlet it doesn't make any output but Bondo, no matter what you change, it will output all four in a row. Bang, 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 they will come out. I mean, numbers will come out, not bangs, okay? So this is great. So it's gonna output the, our four numbers to whatever we want. So we can say, um, make a new object, pack them all together, zero 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 is this all worth it to do all this stuff to get this to work I think so I think so uh, dum dum there we go zero zero because we have to have four of them okay and then we can run this through anything that we want and it will colorize it. So let's just say we prepinned this, uh, type another object, prepend uh, B, not, not B, sorry, F for foreground RGB. Okay? And we'll just run this. Over to here. Okay. Indeed, it looked like a lot of work, but I assure you it will all be worth it when you have your nifty little thing that you can draw with and you can change your colors as you wish and it'll be much more elegant. Will it indeed lock your patcher, choose a color, Choose an opacity. Let's make it a little transparent. Then grab your pen, start writing. Ooh, very nice. Very nice, but maybe green. Yeah. Maybe super transparent. Kind of build that up slowly. Uh, we can make it completely opaque. nice so if we can do that with foreground color we can do it with just about anything so what if we unlock our patchers here take these and encapsulate them into we'll call it patcher four color four color so we'll just call it Patrick Four Color. I can't think of why I'd call it anything else. Okay, and we can put our swatch and our. There we go. Make these look tidy. So nice together, and we can probably just. Can we not just throw that behind them? Arrange. Send it to the back. There we go. Wait, now we don't even have to look at it. Okay. And then uh, when it locks, yeah, that looks great. Okay. So let's unlock and move this and over here. And the prepend over here. And then tell it to reroute its darn wire. Okay, um, it seems like this pen size thing is a big pain in the neck too, and we probably want one of these for 
the background. So um, here, let's move these over here. Um, so we could just take one of these and put a and duplicate it like this right there then go in there and type brgb and connect that and then when we lock our patcher down we can now remember background as we learned before is going to go slowly when you hit clear right and if we get a really good yellow and maybe a little then we'll just keep it the longer you click it the yellower it'll get or you can just turn up the opacity and have it all at once there it is that's full on yellow full on full on whatever it is uh, I don't have a good word for that salmon dusty salmon okay so these uh, these seem like good tools we like them there is another thing that we could have done instead of that and that is to type a message here that just says set frgb or set brgb and change it that way but um, we can do that this way what else do we need to change this pen size thing hey we don't need this anymore this this uh, message so let's get rid of it and we don't need the background message any neither of these background messages so let's get them out of here but pen size is a real thorn in my paw um, and so all we need is somehow to reset these two numbers and there's an easy way to do that um, let me get these down here out of the way so we can keep everything nice and neat. So let's get a, a slider over here. Type in slider, great, and uh, we'll just resize it to something nice and manageable. And um, a typical slider goes from 0 to 127, so that would be a very big pen. Now here's the problem. It's going to put out a number. I'll just put a box under here so we can see what the number is. It's going to put out a number between 0 and 127. We want that to go to either be, we need it split in two and then prepended by the message pen size. There's a couple different ways to do that. And since I like to throw in those goodies with you whenever we're doing Max, I'm going to show you the string technique. If we take both of these numbers and replace them with string 1 and string 1. String is the dollar sign. Here, I'll zoom in here. Sorry. I'm being so... Uh... There we go. So when this thing gets a message, anything coming into this message, it's going to interpret the first number as string one and the second number as string two. In more complicated situations, we could say string one and string two. But with pen size, we only want one number. So let's just see if it'll work that way. I mean, I think it should. So we'll make it a six and try drawing. Now we'll make it a uh, something much bigger that we can tell the difference. 18. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is foreground color so let's go to that. Huh. Very funny. Alrighty. Who could guess why? Oh, it seems to be working fine. Hmm. 
and let's make it uh, a little. Oh, because I started outside the box or something. There we go. A little uh, more transparent and even much more transparent. All right, so just to go over this way of doing things where we build these little um, alpha um, alpha color swatch combinations, you can do the same thing and you could make rather long messages like for example, let's unlock it and just say we were trying to get this paint rectangle to be more interesting. So let's go in here and just say that this is going to be string one space string two string three and string four. I put a space between all of them. Now we could, um, working backwards, um, we need four numbers compressed into here so it can give it that, and that is the pack object. Right? And now we need somehow to get four numbers. I'm going to pull this as far as I think it's going to need to be and uh, we're dealing with uh, positions here so what I'm going to use again is my favorite object in the world Bondo 4 because for a rectangle that should give us enough information about drawing a rectangle connect to those And then we'll just put number boxes up on the top and move them manually. I knew they wouldn't be quite big enough. Darn it. Come on. There we go. Just duplicate these. Duplicate those. Connect them up. I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to change this to um, frame rectangle just because um, it's easier to see what's going on frame instead of paint. So frame the rectangle. That's the equivalent of like stroke the outside, not paint the whole inside. So I'm going to zoom out here and try to remember what our foreground color is. Let's make, oops, lock your patcher. Uh, Let's make our foreground color green. That'll be shown off pretty well here. And uh huh. Okay. So I when I first turned these two up to. 17 and 16, it was making a rectangle at 17, 16, and then going back to 0, and then we actually ended up inverting it. I raised these two numbers up, and it came this way and made another rectangle. Um, let's uh, turn this way down here and hit clear, and, uh, and hit clear again, and hit clear again. There we go. And uh, turn this one up again and just see. See, every time it. I have to say that the real oddity is that it should be framing a rectangle and not. and not painting it. And I don't know why it's painting it. Hmm. Um, just unlock the patcher, make a new message, frame. Oh, come on, 
I just want to see what this is going to turn into. Frame. You know, it's, it's very strange. Sometimes things get glitchy. Frame. No. F. R. A. Hmm. Usually it fills them in for you, but uh, maybe it's not aware of the fact that there's a... There it is. Frame rectangle. I'm just going to click on it and see if it's any different than the one that frame rect, frame rect. Of course, there's another way to do it. And uh, since I'm always game for uh, another way to do things, we could also just say prepend frame rect and see if that worked better. Lock your patcher and then try moving these guys around. Silly me. There it is. Here, well, let's clear that down a little bit. Um, I'm going to lower this number and you'll see right away what the problem is. The um, You see how that's making a... It is framing it, but we made the pen size 49. So if we turn the pen size down to something reasonable and then do this, here I'll clear a little bit, then it won't be filling it in. There we go. So that's getting smaller that way, and that's getting smaller that way, and that's getting smaller that way. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know it was going to draw the the, Fibon, the secret Fibonacci square. Um, so there you go. So just going over that, I'm going to switch this back just because I want everybody to remember this crazy method of putting numbers into messages. and. I'm pretty sure it'll still work. Yeah, there we go. Um, which is the string one, string two, string three, and string four. Um, I'm going to borrow this message box here and run this out to the to the replace the message side of it, just so you can see that. Oops, locking the patcher. Make that 201 and you get a message over ugh, I can't see it so and there's the message that you're getting okay so 201 194 302 310 201 194 301 310 and it's going to stick these numbers in as string 1 string 2 string 3 and string 4 now notice this patch cord is going in the right hand side. This patch is going in the left hand side. Typically, anything coming down this to a message box just bangs the message out. But since it has string numbers on it, it will take the first argument of the message and make it string one, the second, it'll make string two, the third string three, the fourth string four, and so on. So you can actually just use a message box sometime to really relay a lot of information. And uh, we'll probably do that in the next tutorial, but that is some simple drawing with the LCD. And I will see you next time.